uh, narrative to present to you uh, that appeared first in the Michigan History Magazine of 1924. And it's titled Impressions of Detroit 1837 and written by Mrs. Annie Jameson. Um, I, I hope you'll find it interesting. There's quite, what I've done is I haven't used the whole thing. I used the parts about mainly about the Native Americans and their uh, their conflicts at Detroit for Pontchartrain. And um, of all the places I have yet seen in these far western regions, Detroit is the most interesting. It is, moreover, a most ancient and venerable place, dating back to the dark immemorial uh, ages, i.e. almost a century and a quarter ago at this writing. And having its history and antiquities uh, and traditions of heroes and epochs and peace and war, it had it all. No place in the United States presents such a series of events interesting in themselves uh, and per uh, permanently affecting as they occurred both its progress and its prosperity. Five times its flag has changed and three different sovereignties have claimed it has been besieged by the Indians once captured in war, and once burned the ground. A truly long list of events for a young city of a century and a quarter old. Detroit may almost rival her grand dame, Quebec, who sits bristling defiance on the summit of her rocky height in warlike and tragic experience. Very interesting uh, uh, observations of early Detroit. Now we continue. The origin of the city was a little palisaded fort erected here in 1702 by the French under La Motte, La Motte Cadillac to defend their fur trade. It was then called Fort Pontchartrain and from this time till 1760 it remained in possession of the French and continued to increase slowly. So as late as uh, 1721 Charlevoix speaks of the vast herds of buffaloes ranging the plains west of the city. I, I just, I never associate buffaloes with Michigan. I associate them with the plains states, but yes, indeed, they were here, as this attests to. Now, meantime, under the protection of the fort, the settlement and cultivation of the neighboring districts went on, in spite of the attacks of some of the neighboring tribes of Indians, particularly the Atagamis, who, with the Iroquois, seem to have been the only decided and irreconcilable enemies whom the French found in this provision, or province, excuse me. The capture of Quebec and the death of Wolfe being followed by the, uh, by the secession of the whole of the French territory in North America uh, to the power of Great Britain. Detroit, with all the other trading posts in the West, was given up the English to the English. I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit here now, and we're going to talk, I'm going to read to you a little bit more about the Indians of this time period. The, the account continues, the discontent of the Indian tribes upon the uh, transfer of the, the fort and trading post into the possession of the British showed itself early and at length gave rise to one of the most prolonged and savage of all the Indian wars, that of Pontiac in 1763. Um, of, this, of this Pontiac you have read, no doubt, in various books of travels and anecdotes of Indian chiefs. But it is one thing to read of these events by an English fireside where the uh, features of the scene, the forest wilds echoing to the, to the war whoop, the, the painted warrior, the world, or the world's the words scalping, tomahawk, bring no definite meaning to mind, only a vague horror, and quite another thing <clears throat> to recall them here on the spot, arrayed in all their dread yet picturesque reality. Pontiac is the hero par excellence of these regions, and in all of the histories of Detroit, when Detroit uh, becomes a great capital of the West, he will figure like uh, Caracatuus or Arminius in the Roman history. The English contemporaries call him king and emperor of the Indians, but there is absolutely no sovereignty among the, these people. Pontiac was merely a war chief chosen in the usual way, usual way, um, but exercising a more than usual influence on, the, on uh, his 
on his uh, braves. Not by mere bravery, the universal savage virtue, but by talent of a rarer, rarer kind of power of reflection and combination rarely met in the character of the Red Warriors. Pontiac was a man of genius and would have ruled his fellow men under any circumstances and in any country. He formed a project similar to that which Tecumseh entertained 50 years later. He united all the northwestern tribes of the Ottawas, Chippewas, and Potawatomis into one great confederacy uh, against the British, the dogs in red coats, as they were called back then, and had very nearly caused the overthrow, at least the temporary overthrow, of our power. He had planned a simulus... Uh, he had planned a simultaneous attack on all the trading posts in the possession of the French or the English, and so far succeeded that ten of these forts were surprised about the same time, and all of the English soldiers and traders were massacred, while the French were spared. Before any tidings of these horrors and outrages could reach Detroit, Pontiac was here in friendly guise, uh, and all and all his measure admirably arranged for taking of this fort also by stratagem and murdering every Englishman within it. it had been, all had been lost if a poor Indian woman who had received much kindness uh, from the family of the Commandant, Major Gladwin, had not revealed the danger that they were in. I do not yet quite understand why Major Gladwin on the discovery of Pontiac's treachery and having him in his power did not make him and his whole band prisoners. Such a stroke would have ended a rather, uh, or rather it would have prevented the war that followed. But it must be remembered that Major Gladwin was ignorant of the systematic plan of extermination adopted by Pontiac. The news of the massacres at the upper forts had not reached him. He knew no of nothing but the attempt on himself, and from motives of humanity he suffered uh, them to leave the fort and to go free. And no sooner were they outside of the Palisades than they set up <clears throat> the war yell uh, like so many devils, like so many devils, as a bystander expressed it, and turned and discharged their rifles on the garrison. The war, thus, thus savagely declared, was accompanied by all these atro atrocious barbar uh, barbarities and tourists of fate and traits of uh, of, barbari of barbarism and hairbreadth escapes and which render these Indian conflicts so exciting, uh, so terrific, and indeed so picturesque. Des Detroit was in a state of siege by the Indians for 12 months, and gall gallantly they successfully defended uh, by Major Godwin until relieved by General. My good-natured landlord drove me himself in his wagon. Uh, with as much attention and care for my comfort as if I had been one of his near relations. That evening was glorious, the sky perfectly Italian, a genuine Claude Lorraine sky, that beautiful intense amber light uh, reaching to the very uh, zeniths, while the purity and transparent loveliness of the atmospheric effects carried me back to Italy and times long past. I felt it all as people feel things after a sharp fit of indisposition when the nervous system languid at once and sensitive thrills and trembles to every breath of air. As we drove slowly and silently along, we came to a sluggish, melancholy-looking rivulet uh, to which the man pointed with his whip. I expect, he said he, you know all about the Battle of Bloody Run. And I was obliged to confess my ignorance, not without a slight shudder at the hateful, ominous name, which sounded in my ear like an epitome of unimaginable horrors. This was the scene of a night attack made by 300 British upon the camp of the Indians, who were then besieging Detroit. The Indians had uh, notice of their intentions and prepared an ambush to receive them. They had just reached the bank of this rivulet when the Indian foe fell upon them suddenly, and, and they fought hand to hand, bayonet to tomahawk, in the darkness of the night. 
and before the English could extricate themselves, 70 men and most of the officers fell and were scalped on the spot. Them Indians, said my informant, fought like brutes and devils, as most do, I thought, who fight for revenge and existence. And they say the creek here, when morning came, ran red with blood, and so they called it Bloody Run. Now, there certainly is much in the name, whatever Juliet may say, and how much in fame. Do you remember the brook Sanguinito, which flows into Lake, oh boy, Lake Thera Simine? And I'm sure I massacred that. Uh, the meaning and the derivation are the same, but what a difference in sound. The Sanguinito Tis a word one might set to music. Okay, I'll have to send that off to Elton John. Tis a word one might set to music. The, the bloody rumpa, rumpa oh, the very utterance pollutes one's fancy. And in associations, too, how different, though, the circumstances were not unlike, or not unlike. The Indians, uh, faithless and uh, thus Potomac, weary and brave and unbroken by defeat, fighting for his own land against a swarm of invaders, has had no poet, no historian, no uh, to immortalize him. Else, all the ground over which I now tread had been as classical as the shores of Thera, Thera Simini. I'm sorry, some words I just, just can't get it out. <laughs> Now, as they have called Tecumseh the Indian Napoleon, they might style a Pontiac as the Indian Alexander. I do not mean him uh, of Russia, but of the Greek. Here, for instance, is a touch of magnanimity, quite, quite in the Alexander the Great style. Pontiac, before the commencement of the war, had provided for, for the safety of the British officer, Major Rogers by name, who was afterwards employed to relieve Detroit when besieged by the Indians. On this occasion, he sent Pontiac a present of a bottle of brandy uh, to show that he had not forgotten his former obligations to him. Those who were around the Indian warrior when, when the uh, present arrived, particularly some Frenchmen, they warned him not to taste it. Particularly some Frenchmen uh, stressed that that it might be poisoned. Pontiac instantly took a draught from it, saying, as he put the bottle to his lips, that it was not in the power of Major Robert Rogers to hurt him, who had so lately saved his life. I think this story is, is no unworthy uh, pendant uh, to that of Alexander and his physician. Some of these old descriptive texts wander a lot, but it's, it's interesting. If I dwell on these horrid and obscure conflicts, it is uh, partly to amuse the languid, idle hours of convalescence, uh, partly to inspire you with some interest, or some interest for the localities around me, and I may as well, while I pen, while pen is in my hand, give you the conclusion of the story. Now, Pontiac carried uh, the war with so much talent, courage, and resources that the British government found it necessary to send considerable forces against him. General Bradstreet came upon here with, a, with uh, 3,000 men, wa uh, wasting the lands of the, of the Miami and the Wyandotte, burning their villages and destroying their cornfields. And I pray you to observe that in all the accounts of our expeditions against the Indians, as well as those of the Americans under General Wayne, and General Harrison mention uh, is made of the destruction of the cornfields, uh, plantations of corn, to a great extent show that some of the attention must have been paid to agriculture even by these hunting tribes. Well, yeah, because by that time they were no longer hunter and gatherers. They were uh, led a more sedentary lifestyle. That's my comment, not from the, uh, not from the text. I continue. I find mention also of a very interesting and beautiful tradition connected with these regions to the east of the Detroit Territory. There was settled from ancient times a band of Wyandots and Hurons who were called the Neutral Nation, and they never took part in the wars and conflicts of the other tribes. 
Uh, they had two principal villages, which were like the cities of refuge among the Israelites. Uh, whoever fled there from an enemy found a secure and inviolable sanctuary. If two enemies from tribes long at deadly variance met there, they were friends while standing on the consecrated ground. To what circumstances this extraordinary institution owed its existence is not known. It was destroyed after the arrival of the French in the country, uh, not by them, but by some national and internal feud. Uh, but to return to Pontiac once more. With all of his talents, he could not maintain a standing or permanent army, uh, such a thing being contrary to the, all the Indian uh, usages and quite incompatible with their, with their mode of life. His warriors fell away from him every season and departed to their hunting grounds to provide food for their families, which it would be a normal thing, I would think. And Pontiac disdained to take any part in these negotiations and retired to the Illinois where he was murdered from some uh, motive of private animosity by uh, a Peoria um, Indian. So the Ottawas, Chippewas, and Potawatomis, who had been allied under his command, thought it incumbent upon them to avenge his death, and nearly exterminated the whole nation of the Peorias, and thus was the life and the fall of Chief Pontiac. Uh, a fascinating account, despite the wandering text sometimes, and my stumbling over words sometimes, which I do apologize for, uh, but Pontiac he, he had a, a great, or has a great reputation as a warrior uh, and uh, as a great car <laughs> manufactured in Detroit at one time. All right, I hope that you found this interesting, and I am going to go to bed. <laughs> and uh, so I will be back with you real soon, God willing. I love each and every one of you very much, and thank you for tolerating my sometimes inane sense of humor. God bless you.